In this video, we'll do an example of calculating the pressure of a gas using the ideal gas law, van der Waals gas law, and the virial equation of state. All right, so our setup is that we got 1.471 moles of argon gas. It's at 300 Kelvin, and it is in a box with the following dimensions. So what is the pressure of this system according to the ideal gas law? the van der Waals equation of state, and the virial equation of state. Right, for the ideal gas law, uh, pressure times molar volume equals gas constant times temperature, so P equals RT over V bar, once we move V bar to the other side. So first order of business is to calculate the volume. So the volume of this box is going to be the just multiplying each side towards one another, so these are all orthogonal dimensions. So 0 0.2200 meters times 0 0.3250 meters times 0 0.2540 meters, remembering that equation from geometry for a rectangular prism. That gives us 1.816 times 10 to the minus 2 meters cubed. For molar volume, we take that value and we divide it by the number of moles. So 1.816 times 10 to the minus 2 meters cubed divided by 1.471 moles of argon gas gives us 1.2346 times 10 to the negative 2 meters cubed per mole. All right, now we take that and substitute that in with the gas constant times temperature. So the ideal pressure equals 8.31446 joules per mole Kelvin is R in SI units. 300 Kelvin is our temperature and we divide by 1.2346 times 10 to the minus 2 meters cubed per mole. That gives us a pressure of 202,036 pascals. Pascal being the SI unit for temperature, which is 1 newton per meter squared. Remember, pressure is force per area, so newton force per meter squared area. Or joules per meters cubed, newtons per meter squared, same unit. All right, for the van der Waals equation of state, we have P plus A over V bar squared times V bar minus B equals RT. So rearranging that for pressure, we get P equals RT over V bar minus B minus A over V bar squared. So if we know that our ideal pressure is RT over V bar. So if I factor out some things here and rearrange it, what I've got here is that the van der Waals pressure is equal to my ideal pressure times 1 over 1 minus B over V bar minus A over RT V bar. And then that's just algebraic rearrangement using this and this. All right, if I look it up in a table, the van der Waals A parameter for argon is 1.3483 liters squared bars per mole squared. Unfortunate unit, we'll just have to convert that. For B, the B parameter for argon is 0 0.031830 liters per mole. Again, I have to take care with the units of that. These are not SI units. All right, so B over V bar. If I, t if I convert both of these into SI units, remember one liter, uh, yeah, one liter cubed. No, one liter is equal to a decimeter cubed which is 10 to the minus thir 3 meters cubed. One bar is 10 to the fifth pascals. So we get B over V bar is 3.183 times 10 to the minus 5 meters cubed per mole. Divided by V bar is the same from up here. One point <clears throat> yeah, 1.2346 times 10 to the minus 2 meters cubed per mole. So B over V bar is 2.5782 times 10 to the minus 3. So our particles only take up an effective volume of about 0 .0, of about 0.3 percent of the total volume. So our, our particles are still quite small relative to the total volume available to them. A over RTV bar, once I convert A into pascals and meters cubed, 0 0.13483 meters to the sixth pascals per mole squared over a 0.31446 joules per mole Kelvin, 300 Kelvin, 1.2346 times 10 to the minus 2 meters cubed per mole. 
that gives me 4.361 times 10 to the minus third. So now I substitute those back into this expression. The van der Waals pressure is equal to the ideal pressure times uh, 1 over 1 minus b over v bar is 1.00258 minus uh, a over rt v bar 0 0.004361. So notice how each of these are very tiny perturbations away from the ideal pressure. So the them taking up space increases the volume a little bit, and them attracting, being attracted to one another decreases it a little bit. They're a little bit more attracted to one another than the space that they take up. So the result is the van der Waals pressure equals 0.99822 of the ideal pressure. So the ideal equation was only off by about 0.2% here relative to the van der Waals equation. All right, moving along to the virial equation of state. Uh, Z, our compressibility factor is P V bar over RT. That equals one plus second virial coefficient over molar volume, plus third virial coefficient over molar volume squared, et cetera, et cetera. Um, just to give you, just to spoil the answer here, uh, I could look up the third virial coefficient here for argon, but it doesn't actually make any contribution to the result within the number of significant figures that I have. So the third virial coefficient usually doesn't matter at one or two atmospheres. It usually starts mattering at pressures that are higher than that. So I have the pressure equals solving, multiplying both sides by RT over V bar. P equals RT over V bar times one plus B2V over V bar plus et cetera, et cetera, truncating the expansion. If I look up in a table, the second varial coefficient of argon at 300 Kelvin is equal to minus 15.7 uh, centimeters cubed per mole or milliliters per mole. The, a centimeter cubed is 10 to the minus sixth meters cubed. So when I convert that, I get minus 1.57 times 10 to the minus fifth meters cubed per mole. Divide that by molar volume, 1.2346 times 10 to the minus 2 meters cubed per mole. Second virial coefficient over molar volume gives me minus 1.27167 times 10 to the minus 3. So again, that's a very small perturbation relative to the default value of 1. So the virial pressure equals the ideal pressure, RT over V bar times 1 minus 1 1.27 times 10 to the minus 3, or 0 0.99873 times P ideal. So once again, the ideal gas e equation is within about 2% of the virial equation here. If I included the third virial coefficient, it wouldn't make a contribution in, at any of these digits because the pressure is too low for it to matter yet. All right, so knowing that one atmosphere is 101,325 pascals, knowing that my ideal pressure was 202,036 pascals, and knowing what these ratios are, I can convert all of these pressures into atmospheres. So my final result that I'll circle here is my ideal pressure is 1.9939 atmospheres. The van der Waals pressure was 1.9904 atmospheres and the virial pressure was 1.9914 atmospheres. So notice in each case the ideal gas law overestimates the pressure by a little bit, by about 0.2%, but the virial equation and van der Waals equations at these pressures are in pretty good agreement with one another. So usually this is pretty typical for gases at around one to two atmospheres. At one atmosphere, most gases are ideal within 1% error, so that's why we typically use the ideal gas equation. It's pretty good until the pressures get higher. Uh, you'll see that as the pressures get higher and higher, these deviations become much more stark, and it's more important to correct for non-ideal gases as your pressure gets very high and your molar volume gets very low.